So I've got a new set of fork springs for my motorcycle. The one on the right is the stock SV650 spring. The one on the left is the new Racetech spring. If you take a look at the stock spring, you'll see it's quite a bit longer than this new one. The Racetech spring is a stiffer rate, but since it's shorter, that means I'm not going to be able to reuse my stock preload spacers. Luckily, Racetech knows this, and they sent me this piece of tubing that I can use to cut my own preload spacers to the exact length I want. So the first measurement I need to figure out is the difference in length between the two springs. First, we'll go ahead and measure the stock Suzuki spring. It measures at 435 millimeters. Next up, the Racetech spring, and this measures in at 340 millimeters. I also need to know the length of my stock preload spacer, which measures out to be 50 millimeters. So, with these three numbers figured out, we can do some simple first grade math and figure out what my new spacer should be cut to. 435 minus 340 gives us 95. That's the difference in length between the two springs. Add that to the length of the stock spacer and we get 145 millimeters. This is the length that I'll cut my new preload spacer to be. I've got a mark at 145 millimeters and then I'm gonna cut this tubing with a pipe cutter tool. If you've never used this before, it's easy. It's got these two rolling wheels and then a cutting wheel on top. You place the pipe you wanna cut between the two rollers and then you tighten down the cutting wheel to the exact spot you want. When you tighten the handle on these tools, you just do a little bit at a time. You don't wanna to go too much at any one point or you're going to distort the tubing and make it out around. If everything's working right, you just tighten it down a little bit spin the pipe around a few times, tighten a little more, and keep doing that until it cuts through. However, I will warn you that on some tools, especially like these Cheap Harbor freight cutters, they'll do this annoying thing where they want to spiral. Instead of the wheel landing into the original spot, it'll start to go to one side. To fix this, you just want to back it up a little bit and then apply a little pressure to force the wheel to jump back into its original groove to whichever side it's missing on. Once you get it to jump back into its original spot, you just kind of work that section back and forth a little bit to establish a groove so that it stays in one continuous circle without spiraling. Sometimes they also do this thing where they'll cut all the way except for this last little bit that doesn't want to go. Just do it as much as you can, and then you can just break them apart with your hands. Something that is important, please make sure that you deburr the end of these pipes before you put them in. All these little shavings that are coming off, you do not want that stuff mixing in with your fork oil. That would be terrible for your forks. So take the time and clean them up real good before you install them. And there you have it, a set of spacers cut to match the stock setup. Now in truth, these might actually be a little bit too long. And the reason for that is I'm switching to stiffer springs. Stiffer springs need less preload to get the same rider sag. So I'm just gonna have to get all this stuff back together and test it out and see if it needs adjustments. But it's a good place to start to match the stock length and it's easier to take away tubing than to add it. If you have any questions or you wanna give any advice on the topic, please leave a comment, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.